there's something very cool about having this right in the epicenter of the film world. You know, um, Warner Brothers Studios only a few miles away, and they were the company that started this whole thing off. So it's pretty amazing, I think, to have uh, to have that right next to this, to have the, the film experience, and also to have um, such an immersive theming experience that Universal do so well. I mean, I came here 20 years ago as a seven-year-old to ride the rides with my family. Um, to be back here and to be part of it is um, about as cool as any of the other things that we've been able to do, I think. The new ride, The Forbidden Journey, uh, I think the thing I noticed with it here compared to Orlando is that there's a bit more in the ride itself. Obviously, you've got the 3D glasses, so it's a bit more immersive, but they seem to take uh, when you go through different parts of it on the ride, it seems to you seem to see more in this one than the other one. So I suppose it's for me that's my favourite part. I guess seeing that there's the snow on the rooftops here in uh, Southern California, that's a bit different. But when um, actually when we, it always happened whenever, especially Oliver and myself, whenever we filmed something which was set in the winter, and we'd have to wear all the like the scarves, the hats, two jackets, all that stuff. It was always on the hottest days of the year. Actually, the one in the, the third movie, um, when Fred and George give Harry the Marauder's map, again, we're all in that, and that was actually the hottest day on record in the UK. <laughs> so being here and it's hot and there's snow, I'm reminded straight away of when we were filming. If you had an invisibility cloak and the ability to nick something from one of the uh, shops here, is there anything particular that you'd love to be able to take home? Um, I would take, uh, I think they probably have one here, the, the replica of the Sword of Gryffindor. I'm particularly fond of that for many reasons. <laughs> the grip hook in me comes roaring to the surface when I see that, so uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Thank you. I would like the entire selection of pygmy pups, and I would like to make a duvet of all of them. <laughs> I just think that would be the height of luxury. Yeah. Uh, I'd probably borrow the hologram of, when you go into the Forbidden Journey, there's that hologram. So I may follow the hologram of Rupert and stick it outside his door, ring his doorbell and just like see what we're doing. <laughs> um, You know, theme park food has got a reputation for being not the best food in the world, but here at the Three Room Six and in the Wizarding World, all the food and beverage is fantastic. Uh, and it reminds me of being at home in, in Britain once again. So, uh, so yeah, that, that's one of my favourite things. Uh, I'm not one for the rides, personally. I mean, I don't like roller coasters. And the, the disadvantage about the roller coaster here in the Wizarding World, uh, the flight of the Hippogriff, is that um, my usual excuse is that I'm too short to ride them. And uh, people go, oh yeah, never mind. And I go, oh, it's a shame, isn't it? Um, but the flight of the Hippogriff, I can ride that. I am above the height limit for it, which is really disappointing. Um, so if you hear someone screaming like a girl later on, it's me uh, on, on the flight of the Hippogriff. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, you, whatever you do though, don't eat the food, then go on the rides, do it around the other way. <laughs> I mean, I think it's very interesting the way that we, we have experiences like this. And in turn, you know, they will feed interest in the literature and in the films once again, in the cycle. So you might get, you know, families coming here, um, especially younger children who might not have had experience of reading the books or even seeing the films, um, but will then fall in love with the environment and the, the story and the ideas and then go away and start reading the books and, and watching the films. So I think that's really interesting the way that the one can feed the other. Uh, and what J.K. Rowling's doing all, all over the world at the moment is she's, she's starting to give us other glimpses into the wizarding world through, you know, Fantastic Beasts coming later this year and, and the play that's opening in London. And so I think that's really exciting and, and, and that's going to continue, uh, you know, and, and places like the wizarding world here will be around for generations to experience and enjoy and be introduced to this, this wonderful creation of hers. These parks are really made with fans in mind. If you you speak to like the architects there's so many details from the books that you wouldn't know unless you know someone points them out or unless you're really you know uh, put a, a fine comb through the books um and i think it just the, the fact that fans do go and they, they turn up in ropes <laughs> just pretending they're hogwarts students and every now and then at an airport i will see someone wandering around in robes and it's just like making it the norm it's like bringing it into our world which i think is really fun so uh, if you have certain one you can do spells for the window displays so that's pretty cool to, to instead of just doing it and then waiting for some guy with a tennis ball to do that and then you see it in the film whereas now that actually happens 
but it does only happen here in the wizarding world. You can't go home and do it. It's obviously you're then in the muggle world. So. Now there was a story of a lady. She had an interactive wand here in the wizarding world and took it, took it home, and then came back the next day demanding her money back because it didn't work. I think she's trying to do the washing up with it and stuff. You know, so, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, they, you shouldn't do magic outside of the wizarding world, so that's why they don't work. That's a really good explanation. Yes, <laughs> No, I don't think I don't think you need to have, have done either before you come here necessarily. Uh, that's the beauty of it. You can explore and, and and find out about the characters and things through this environment if you wish. Um, but I suppose having seen the films or read the books first would, would enhance that as well. So yeah, uh, the, reading them and watching them would definitely deepen your appreciation. I know some people like I have some friends who still haven't read them. You know, like I, I don't know how. I actually have a sister who hasn't read them so now. And, uh, but they go here and they get really excited. She's totally embraced her Slytherin side. And that's actually an insult I used to use when she really annoyed me. I'd say, you're such a Slytherin. And she came here and she got really into it and I'm really proud of being a Slytherin. So I think, yeah, it's both. It, obviously, you can you'll notice things more when you've read the books, but also they can be a way of bringing you into the world, of welcoming you to it. I guess if you haven't seen any or know anything about it, you're kind of like Harry in the first, in the first one. Like he comes straight into the world, and what's that? What's that? And I guarantee twenty people within a two-yard radius can tell you what things are. So, and that's what we've seen in other parts is that the fans are so interactive with each other. Like, way on like people from Brazil chat with people from Canada, and they all have the same appreciation for for the same world. So, uh, you don't really need to have know anything about it but like everyone says it's you have a bit more of a more appreciation subscribe to our channel for more theme park news and videos